Hello and welcome back to my channel Code with Ease. Today we are going to solve the question on rearrangement of array. It is called alternate positive and negative numbers. So in this, we are given an unsorted array which consists of both positive as well as negative integers. And we have to rearrange the same array without changing the relative order of the negative and the positive numbers. But it should start with a positive number followed by a negative number and so on. So we have to create an arrangement of alternate positive and negative numbers without changing the order of the numbers. And it should start with a positive number. As it is given in this example, as we can see in the output starts with a positive integer followed by a negative integer, and then again a positive integer followed by a negative integer and so on. We have to modify the array itself. So it is an in-place modification of array. We should not be creating another new array and then placing the numbers one by one. We have to modify the same array itself and that is where the trick of the question lies. Expected time complexity is ON, that's linear and space, additional space if required is again order of n. But this should not be misleading to you that just because we are given auxiliary space of n and uh, we will be creating another new array and then putting the elements one by one into that, that is not the case. If that was the case, it would have been very easy, like create another, create a, just an array and then iterate through that array and put the numbers in its right place, but that is not what we are supposed to do. We have to place, uh, we have to, we have to modify the array itself. Um, it is called in-place modification of the array. So with that, let's try to see how can we solve this. Hi, here's a brief introduction for the ones who are new to the channel. The objective of Code with Ease is to make problem solving and programming simpler. If you are someone who wants to become a great developer and wants to level up their skills, data structures and algorithms is indispensable and you need to form a solid foundation of that. And this is exactly where we come in. Because we post topic-wise video explanations in Java on various coding interview questions that can not only help to crack the coding interview, but also help to improve and refine the problem-solving abilities as a developer. And finally, here is the USP of our channel. We code every solution live, we do not copy-paste code snippets. We start off by clearly defining the problem statement, the given inputs, the required output, time and space complexities. We also then discuss the brute force way of solving any question without jumping onto the solution and then gradually move on to the optimal solution. We try to use online whiteboarding wherever applicable to explain the approach and the concepts. So that is all about us. So if you guys also want to be a part of this journey, do support us by subscribing to the channel. So with that, now let's get back to the question. So what is going to be the brute force way of solving this? Because that is what we always try to think of first. As I said, we are not supposed to create any new array. It is an in-place modification of array. So whatever we have to do, we have to do it with the same array itself. So if we talk about the brute force way of solving this, we can maybe, first of all, like what we need, we need it to be starting with the positive number. Means every number which is in the even position should be a number which is a, a positive integer. And the numbers in the odd places will be the negative integers. If that is the case, we can keep one counter to track the counter to track the positive numbers. And how can we get this counter? We can we have to traverse through the array to get a count of all the positive integers that we have. And then we can split the array in such a way so that we will push all the positive numbers to the left and the negative numbers to the right. And then we can alternately swap the numbers. So if we can do something like 9, 4, and then 5, 0, 2, all of them will be coming in the first half of the array. And then if you push all the negative numbers to the last, in that way, it is, since it is alternate positioning of numbers, so if you push, if you split the array in two halves, first half as positive and second half as negative, alternate swapping can be done. And in that way, we can rearrange the same array and put all the integers in its alternate positions. But the problem in doing that, the biggest problem is this. We are supposed to place the numbers alternately, but we should not be changing the relative order of the positive and negative numbers. So if we push all the positive numbers on one side and push all the negative numbers to the right hand side, there might be a possibility that we will disorient the actual ordering of the elements. Since we are asked to preserve the relative order, ordering of the elements and when we talk of this ordering, there is a data structure which is list. List data structure always helps us in preserving the actual order of the elements in whatever order it has been inserted. So specifically array list. So we can make use of array list. That is one hint which we have got that whenever you will be asked to not change the order of elements or something, uh, always try to think of in terms of list data structure of using that. Similarly, like uh, in the previous videos also, I have told whenever we talk of duplicate elements, unique elements, we can think of using set data structure. So th these are the some small hints or indicators which helps us in determining what should be the best suited data structure in solving the question. Anyway, back to the problem we have. So we can use list 
Okay. So how can we use bliss to solve this question? What we will do is, uh, we will divide this, this into two different buckets. We need positive numbers and we need negative numbers. So let's traverse the array and then we will make one bucket of positive integers and we will put this into our list. Positive integers in list 1. And we will have the negative integers, negative integers into another list which is going to be list 2. So now we have two different lists ready. List 1 and 2, one is containing positive integers, list 2 containing negative integers. Now it is simple. Now what we want, we want the first element to be a positive number. So we'll pull one, one element from the list 1. We'll start with list 1 and we'll pull one element from list 1. So list 1's one element we'll put. Then list 2's second element we'll put. Then again list 1's another element we'll put followed by list 2's second element. So list 1, wherever you are putting list 1, that is basically the positive integers that we are placing. And list 2, wherever we are putting that element from uh, list 2 is the negative integer. So in that way, ultimately, we can place the elements into the same array itself by manipulating the index uh, variables. And then we can get the required output in which it will start from a positive number. The ordering will also not be messed up because we have kept uh, all the elements into a list. And secondly, and finally, the placing the arrangement of the arrays. And finally, the placing of the integers will also be done alternately. So all the things are going to be solved only by using a list, putting data into the list and then pulling data out of the list and placing in its correct position alternately. That's it. So that's the approach that we are going to deal with. Well, before we move on further, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for the notifications. Continue watching the video till the very end and if you find it useful, please hit the like button so that others can also get the benefit out of this. So let's continue. So let's start with the code. Like I said, we'll have an array list to track the positive integers first. So we can call this as list positive. Another, another list for the negative ones. So we have to traverse this array and we can, based on the positive or negative integers, we have to fill in this list with the respective integers. So i equal to 0, i less than n, and i plus plus. If arr of i is greater than 0, so it's a positive number, if it is, we are just going to add to our list of positive ARR of i. Else, we will add it to our list of negative That's it. So this for loop is going to be just populating both the list with the positive and the negative integers. Once we have both the lists ready, now what we have to do is now we have to start our rearrangement of the array. So first of all, we would need two pointers to track both the list, one list of the positive integer and the list of the negative integers as well. Now, okay, so we have the list of positive and the list of negative integers ready, but we don't know what is the length of these two lists, like whether this list has more numbers or this list of negative has more integers or whatever be the case. So we need to loop through both the lists in a way so that if any of the lists exhausts, then we should be able to break the loop. For example, if the list of positive has 10 integers and the list of negative has 5 integers. So the list of negative, as soon as we are done with 5 integers, it should break. So we will have 5 positive and 5 negative so far. The remaining the extra 5 positive integers should be appended at the end because the list of positive and the list of negative integers, the lengths can vary. Whichever will exhaust first, we will break the loop and then whatever remaining is there in either of the list, we are going to append that to the same array. So for that reason, we have to use a while loop. So this while loop, what we will do in that, we will say this POS, whatever this variable is tracking, is less than the list of positive dot size and this negative is less than the list of negative dot size. So these two pointers are done and one more pointer we would need in order to fill in the data into our array, this array itself. So we'll need, we'll call this maybe just the index. This also will start from zero. 
So this ARR of index, this ARR of index into this we will put our data by pulling in from the respective list. So we'll do like ARR of index. First of all, we need to from the positive list because it has to start with a positive number. So we'll do this dot get dot get years. We also have to increment the pointers manually. So instead of doing that, we will add over here only index plus plus and pos plus plus. Why index plus plus? Because once one index is populated, it has to go to the next. Similarly, when when one data is already pulled in from the positive list of integers, it has to go to the next number. So we'll copy this line, and the same thing we have to do it for our negative number as well because we have to make an alternate arrangement. In this case, the pointer will be neg, the negative pointer. So once number one. So firstly, in one position, the positive number is inserted. In the second position, the negative number is inserted. And the loop keeps on happening till any one of the lists exhaust. That is simply, that is what is going to happen inside this while loop. Now, outside of this while loop, if any of the lists exhaust, we have to continue the same thing for the extra items that is there in any of the lists. So we'll just copy this and we will do the same operation. And again, I'll just copy this and we are going to do this for the negative list also. Yeah, that's it. So once all of this is done, our arrange, so once all of this is done, our array should be rearranged. Okay, so we'll compile this. Okay, so it is, okay, so all the test cases are passed. So yeah, that was all about this question, rearrangement of the array by placing the positive and the negative numbers alternately. Do let us know in the comments below if you guys have any questions or doubts or you want to share any feedback on this video. If you have enjoyed the session so far, do hit the like button so that this can reach out to many more people. And if it does, it just gives us enough motivation to put out more such content. Also, if you are looking forward to more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon next to the subscribe button to never miss an update on our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.